straight out of Scotland, this is the Reluctant Theologian Podcast. Oh, so reluctant. I am your host, Dr. R.T. Mullins from the University of St. Andrews. In today's episode, Dr. Emma Sani and I discuss the question, what is time? This is an important question that most philosophers, scientists, and theologians refuse to answer. Emma asks me to discuss my definition of time. Then we chat about some of the different puzzles that arise for the nature of time. We also explore some of the implications of time for the nature of God, creation, divine providence, and human free will. If you have questions or topics that you would like to hear discussed on the show, you can send me a message at rtmullins.com. Well, ready or not, here is Emma and I talking about time. Enjoy. So what are you working on right now? What am I working on right now? I'm trying to get back into time stuff and providence time stuff. Time stuff. Time stuff. Because nobody will tell oh. me what time is. And that's super annoying. I know. And I could not believe this. Right. It's just like, this blow my mind. I'm like, what, what, what are you talking about? I'm surely someone come up with a definition. Right. Physics tell you what time is. And no, they don't. <sighs> So I've been talking to the Higgs Center for Theoretical Physics recently, trying to organize a conference. And I said I want to do a conference on what is time. And and the first email they get sent back to me is they're like, yeah, that's a really interesting topic. We don't have a clue what time is. We don't really talk about that. We're not interested in that topic in general. Like we're so more interested. they're freaking out. Right. Yeah. And so, so they're excited. Um, but they were like, yeah, we don't know what time is. And because like what they do is they come up with like time in terms of like a mathematical concept that they can use to make predictions. But what is time itself? I don't know. But we don't know. That's not that's not a physics question. I mean, right. a question that someone studies physics right will feel that he has to give an answer to. Right, and they'll give you what's like what's called uh, technically it's called like an operational definition. Yeah, that's you know physics just calculate. Yeah, just yeah. shut up and calculate. That's exactly. yeah, that's their attitude. And that's <laughs> that, that's far, that's fine as far as it goes. But it, if you're wanting to know like like really the fundamental nature of like time or space or matter, you're not going to get it from you know. Well, I just need some kind of operational definition to give useful predictions. Like, you're not going to get that because the person doing that, they're not interested in answering the fundamental question. Yeah, that's your job. That's my job as a philosopher. <laughs> yeah, right. You, know, that you always forget that's your job. Like, when you were telling me, mm -hmm. what you were asking me, the, was that that probing question? And me and Susanna, we were like staring at each other. And we were like, that's... That's not what we are interested to. No, oh, when we were talking about, well, we were talking about viruses and then we got on the topic of DNA and RNA and where do these things come from? Mm -hmm. And what was it? You guys told me that you need, or DNA cr uh, creates proteins, Yeah. but you need proteins to create DNA. Uh, yes. <laughs> right. And so I was like, well, hang on. Like if I need protein to create the DNA, but I need the DNA to create the protein, like, like. I've got this vicious circularity here. And like, we where's were it like, no bother at all because we're like, you know, the the common ancestor for everyone had that already. Right. Building somehow. Yeah, but where did that come from? And that's not my department. Right, but I remember you being really bothered by this, whereas I remember Susanna <laughs> going, oh, that's not my job. That's, that's your job, Ryan. I was bothered just because maybe you made me think. Right, whereas Susanna had thought about this, but she was like, oh, no, I don't care. Like, it's uh, anymore. Um, because Because, like, I just need to look at, I've got the stuff. Where does it come from? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I've got the DNA, and I, I'm studying the DNA. And so I find that really interesting, because it, it kind of demyth, uh, like, uh, yeah, cr it, there's a myth about what scientists are up to, about, like, unlocking the mysteries of the universe and stuff. Well... We do. You do unlock interesting things. But as I always tell you a million times, we're just describing things. Yeah. That's all we do. We and don't that's... come up with, you know, we don't create anything. Right. You're we... describing stuff that's already there. Yeah. Where does it come from? How does it get that way? Mm, not quite as interested. We describe, like, how mechanism right. works. Yeah. The existing mechanism. Yeah. We're not interested in why these mechanisms are here right and who put them in there in right. the way they are that's a very different question exactly but you know you need both yeah i do because i think if you want to give a, a full story of the world if you want to give a theory of everything 
then you're going to have to have both kinds of explanations at play. So you're going to have to have the physical explanations and the metaphysical explanations. And the metaphysical explanations, that's obviously like what interests me the most. So I, so when I'm trying to think a question about like what is time, well, I, I thought I was supposed to be able to ask physicists, but then a lot of them really shy away from that question. They get really uncomfortable with that question, which is shocking because people who popularize like physics, they're happy to answer that question all the time and make all sorts of crazy statements about time. So give me some statements on what is time. So... Most people will just say, I don't know what it is, um, but I'll just assume you have some kind of idea. And then they start talking about features of time. That's okay. how most textbooks on time start. And then they'll quote like, you know, usually St. Augustine or maybe like an obscure Greek thinker that nobody's heard of that said, what is time? I don't know. Or I know what it is until you ask me Then I don't know what it is. Time is uh, is changing. There's always, been a, that? there's always been a close association with change, but... There are some people who think you could have time without change, but usually, historically, most people have thought, yeah, there's some tight connection between time and change, but they don't want to say it's the exact same thing because change is what brings about new moments, but time is supposed to be, is it time just those moments or is time like something else? Is time like the measure of these moments? Like what's going on here? And so they have these kind of like messy statements that sometimes like, so you see this one statement a lot, it'll say, time is the measure of motion or the measure of change but then when they start articulating what that looks like then they don't actually mean time is just a measurement like they're talking about well one feature of of change is that i can measure if i'm talking about amount of time i can, that's like that's the measurement but what am i measuring am i measuring change well no i'm measuring a certain number of changes which is that's the time which is just an amount of time but they're not talking about time itself though they're talking about like some kind of like other thing and so that's where it gets really confusing. So there's all these different concepts that we use to like, but we like kind of use the word time for, but we're really talking about different features of reality. But uh, okay. It still doesn't get, it still doesn't answer the question of what is time. This doesn't answer to my question, but right. I'm pretty sure you wrote a book about time. Well, I, yeah, and I didn't know what the answer was either. So I'm taking that book and not giving me the answer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do with that book. Right. So yeah, <laughs> and, and this bothered me. And so what I did was I tried to like ignore that like everybody else did and nobody noticed. Um, like everybody's read the book have not pretty noticed. Sure now noticed that. Well, I, I was always noticing. <laughs> uh, and it always bothered me, but nobody else noticed it. So what I did was I said, look, there are, some different accounts about like about time some people think time is it just is change or time exists if and only if change exists uh, and other people think time can exist without change and then from there i talked about i do what everybody else does which is you start talking about different features of time like what moments of time exists time's direction how do you measure it i did all that and never actually said what time is i just said well time might exist with change or without change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's cheeky but that's what everybody does so I was able to get away with it. But now yeah. I'm really but now I'm really bothered by this because now I'm really I'm Now you really, want to come clean. I want to come clean and say, like, hang on. If like so a lot of theological positions they want to say God creates time. And I'm like, well, if you don't know what time is, how can you say God creates it? Uh, and other people want to say, Well, God doesn't create time. I'm like, that's fine. But if you know what time is, then you can't say God doesn't create it because you're like what what is this stuff that you're talking yes. about? So there's one guy named um, uh, Marcello Oreste Fiocco who he's actually tried to ta like tackle this topic. And it's really kind of mysterious the way he lays it out, but he's at least he's trying because nobody else is even trying to answer the question, what is time? <laughs> and so he'll say, he'll say this, he'll say time is this th natured entity that makes change possible. So it's a natured entity that makes change possible. It is the thing that is the source of moments and it's the thing that kind of unifies a series of moments. Because you could have lots of different like ways like the world could go, like a different like timeline like, could take place, a different series of moments could take place. Yes. Why does this particular series of moments take place in the way that they do? You gotta have something that unifies those moments that makes, makes it the case that this moment follows that other one instead of some other moment following from it. And so time is just whatever does that. How can time create something? Sounds very bizarre. Exactly. And that's what Fioko doesn't go into. And so I'm like, mm, this sounds super weird. I need something else. And, and so I'm like, ah, mm -hmm. uh -huh. spoiler alert. Right. Yeah. I've got, it was like, I was like, okay. If <laughs> I know I'm, where you're going with that. Right. You didn't know exactly where I'm going I with that. I know where you're going with that. Right. Well, if you're, if you're, if you're, you know, a young Christian philosopher yes. and you've got God in your ontology, right. You know, 
you kind of want to make God, uh, you want to, you want to put God to work in your philosophy, right? Mm-hmm. You want to make God do something to your, with your philosophical ideas. Cause otherwise God, like some people, they just have God in their, in their philosophy and God's just kind of hanging out doing nothing. And so I'm like, no, 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 God, you're going to do some philosophical work for me. Okay. So what I've done is I've said, well, okay, well, what's a natured entity that could be the source of moments that it makes change possible and that could unify all the moments. I'm like, well, God could do that. Like God's a natured entity that is, is an explanation for why change is possible. Why? Cause he's got power and he has free will. So he could be in one state and, and do something and be in a different state. I know, but we are end up, we are end up in that annoying thing mm-hmm. that God has to constantly do something for keep me in existence. Oh, that really bothers me because if you're telling me that he's like, you know, the side where the timeline is going, he's always like mm-hmm. mastering and moving stuff. And I find it like, yeah. no, I hate this. I hate it so much because I don't, I can't even think of someone constantly doing something. He has to chill. Just like it's done. Sit down. And the, he told me that that book, you know, the Bible, the Bible, it says that yeah. after seven days, sit down and relax. Oh. That, that means that he could not sit down and relax. Right. <laughs> right. So, okay. So what you're talking about is what things called divine sustaining. So like, uh, cause like, cause on this count of time that I'm talking about, like, uh, God just is time and God's the reason any given moment exists. And because he's constantly sustaining different things in existence by performing different actions. And so God's going to be doing something at every, any given moment. And you don't like that. It's uh, so stressful. It's I stre- feel sorry for him. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> that sounds an awful job. Who wants doing that? Well, like, okay. I mean, if you are an all-powerful being, like, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be tiring. I'm just tired only thinking about. Well, that. right, but you don't have like unlimited power. I know. So like. <laughs> but I just know. Ah. <laughs> I okay so like I I so okay so let's let's look at these problems like one by one. So one problem is like wouldn't that be exhausting? And I want to say no. If you if you if you're really really omnipotent, if you're all powerful, like you just won't be tired. You won't be exhausted. So that's not a problem. Is it stressful? Um I don't know. Uh I guess it kind of depends on what you think about God's emotional life. Does God get like upset by what's going on in the world? Yes. And I want to say yeah, he does, but um but I think he's got a plan before he creates a like a particular timeline. Before but he when? A, when does he do it? Yeah. Before. It doesn't have the time. Oh. Before creating a timeline. That makes no sense, Ryan. Well, oh, I see. Okay. So if you think that God just is time, uh, then before God creates anything, you'd ask, well, when does God exist? And you, and, and you would say, well, he exists at the first moment. So time is, so on this account, time is what makes change possible and time is the source of moments and time is what unifies a series of moments. But there was something before the first moment. There can't be something before the first moment uh, on this, on this account, because time is what makes a moment exist. And so if God exists, then a moment exists, because if God is time and time is what makes moment exist, then you're just going to have a moment. So they're just like, it just necessarily follows from the very existence of God that there's a moment. But if you are something, like if he's got his time, yeah. how can he create, how can have physical time to create time? You know what I mean? Uh, maybe. Like if I want to create something, yeah. I will have to think about something yep. Yep. and then do an action. Yes. But if I'm the action, something is missing there. Right. So, uh, so the first moment, so moments don't have a length to them. When I talk about how much time does some something take, um, I'm talking about a series of moments. So any given moment doesn't actually have a particular amount of time that it takes. I know, but then I don't like that because then you're telling me that thing that I would never get somewhere. Oh, oh really? Because, because if every, every moment has like, uh, you know... Oh, unlimited actually, length I yeah. will never go anywhere from point A to B because it will take an unlimited time to go from A to B so I will never get there oh actually I can get out of that so um, so what you were referring to is like a Zeno's paradox and so there's like a, one example is like so imagine that I want to walk across the room well how do I do that if space is like infinitely divisible because any in between any two units of space there's another one there's another unit of space. But it's the same with moments. And you can say the same, and, you, yeah, and Zeno does the same thing with like motion and with like time. And so if you say in between any two moments, there's another moment, 
then that means time, like moments are uh, a series of moments are infinitely yeah. divisible. I want to say, why should I believe that between any two moments, there's another moment? Why can't there just be one moment and then another? Why does there have to be like a moment in between those? It depends how you make your division. Right. I, so I just want to deny it's infinitely divisible. I just don't see why that should even be the case. Okay. Uh, and so then that that's so this is what's called a, a discrete theory of time. So it's a, you you take moments to be these discrete units uh, instead of infinitely divisible. I and see. then so well, why was able to like uh, you know run the race in five minutes? Uh, you know because shouldn't that be like infinitely divisible? And be like no, it's not infinitely divisible. There's a finite number of moments there. Yeah. And- so then there's no worry. But a related worry, though, to what you could get at, you could say, like, well, okay, so say there's God just hanging out before he creates a universe. Uh, well, he's got to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't that take a, like a, like, shouldn't that take a few moments at least? Yeah. But I, that, no, no, that's, that's not a problem that happened at the beginning. It happened all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I'm happy to say, of course, thought, t- thought might take time. So it might take several moments. Performing an action might, might take several moments. That's fine with me. I don't care. I'm not following this because if he's time... He is time. He creates in the moment. He's the source of the moments, yeah. Things don't stop. I mean, if it was mm. like, if you say like, he's thinking right. and take a moment. Yeah. Everything should stop. Oh, um, that's possible. So... What? Yeah. No, that's not possible. No, 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 no. So this is, uh, this is, this is crazy stuff. This is really funny <laughs> stuff. So during the scientific revolution in the 17th century, a bunch of different thinkers had this common thought experiment they would run and this kind of like was a dividing line uh, between like which view if you held so if you held a view like the one i'm kind of articulating or if you held some other view where time exists if and only if change exists so they would give this thought experiment they would say imagine god creates a universe he lets it run for a while and then he just destroys it he's just done with it he completely annihilates it okay well then a thousand years later god creates another universe right and, and so you've got this thousand year gap where it's just God hanging out and there's no, no, nothing else in between the two universes. Okay. Is that possible? Why not? And, and that's what like people like Isaac Newton or Pierre Gassendi or Samuel Clark and these others, they would say like, yeah, that's fine. It's totally fine. Whereas if you think time exists, if and only if change exists, well, if you've got God, like just destroying a universe, uh-huh. how do you get the thousand years up and running before the next universe God creates? Well, I think it's like depend where time is. Mm-hmm. If it's it's not in the universe, you can get out of that. Exactly. So if God is time, no problem, supposedly. But if time is just like associated with change, well, then how am I getting this thousand years up and running? And mm. so some people would go, well, time cannot exist without change. So this whole whole thought experiment is just absurd. It can't work. Okay. Whereas I want to say something slightly different, though. I want to say, of course, time could exist in between the destruction of the universe and before God creates another universe. But I don't think you would have any meaningful sense in which you could say a thousand years, though. Because I think you would lose the ability to develop like a clock to measure those. Because there's no constant changes to create the ticks that you need to get something that you can say that's a thousand years. Because it could be simply just say God destroys the universe and then God does nothing. I want to say that that would just be a single moment because uh, because moments are distinguished by what happens at them. And so if there's nothing's happening, then that's just a single moment. And so there's no amount of time. Time exists because God is time and there's a moment, but I need a series of moments, which is a series of changes in order to, in order to have like more than one moment. But you have a series of moments. There was like a universe, there's no universe, and there's another universe. Right. At three distinct moments. I've got three distinct moments. Yeah, so that moment in between, that's just one moment. Yeah. How long does that moment last? Moments don't have a a length of time. So when people like Pierre Gassendi are like, there's a thousand years, I'm like, how do you get the thousand years? But I want to agree with someone like Gassendi and be like, yeah, 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 cool. There's time there. Yeah. There is time there somewhere. Or I guess time then, I should say. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, weird stuff. That's what you're up to now. That's what I'm up to now. And then I want to solve some other problems related to why didn't God create the universe sooner? Uh, why did God create this universe instead of another? Why is that even a problem? It's, it would it, have his own reason. Well, that's the, well, Maybe this, there are no reasons. Well, the, the no reasons, nobody wants that. Why? Because You're the, always so bothered about this. I know, I know. Stochastic thing happening. Right. No reason for that. Right. You're freaking out. Yeah, because I want a reasonable universe. 
I want to say that like the sort of chaos, the sort of awful things we see happen is in the the reason they're so awful or chaotic, seem so awful and seem chaotic is because it's within the backdrop of a, of a, of a reasonable universe. Yeah. So anyway, so like, okay, so there's a series of like worries you might have about like, why wouldn't God create the universe sooner? And so like so St. Augustine asked this, is good, gets asked this question. He's like, why didn't God create the universe sooner? And, and he gives like one answer and he says, well, it's because God was creating hell for people who ask questions like that. And obviously, yeah, you know, and he's just joking. He's just joking. Uh, and then he tries to give a real answer, which he says, well, God's timeless and time didn't exist before the universe. So like, there's just no meaningful sense in which you could even ask the question. So how long did it, why didn't God create sooner? There is no sooner because there is no time on his mm-hmm. view. Whereas my view, I'm like, well, time does exist. So like, why didn't, why didn't he create sooner? Well, I can say something similar though, because I think there's just like a single moment before God creates the universe. And it's just God hanging out by himself. That's that. So no sense is there sooner because you need a series of moments, several moments in order to talk about a sooner, but there's just one moment. There's God by himself. And then a second moment is God plus stuff. <laughs> so I don't have to answer why sooner because there is no such thing as sooner in that case. I'm sorry. I just don't find this question interesting at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's something like it, sooner, no- later. Right. But at the end, we're here. At the end, we're here. So why the only reason matter? it bothers people what, is... What it bothers me more is like, why it create anything at all? Right. That thing is more interesting question. Yes. And so, this, so the question I'm looking at, why sooner or why not sooner, is a question that you would ask after the why, is there something rather than nothing? Mm-hmm. And so Leibniz gets really bothered by this because Leibniz is asking, that's, he says that's like one of the fundamental questions of all philosophy is why is there something rather than nothing? And then when he's debating Samuel Clark, who affirms a view like mine about God and time, Clark says God doesn't create time because time is like this attribute of God. And so uh, Leibniz is like, well, okay, we both agree God created the universe for a reason because, and God always has to act for reasons because God's perfectly rational. That's just what it means to be perfectly rational. You always act for reasons. And Clark's like, yeah, yeah, cool. Sounds good. And Leibniz is like, but you've also got God in time before the universe. So what reason could he possibly have for creating the universe when he does you agree god is you know perfectly rational so always acts for reasons if you can't identify a reason for creating like at this moment instead of another moment well then you don't have a god who's reasonable and and if god's perfectly reasonable then he he has to act for a reason but there's no reason so the god you couldn't have a god that creates a universe at all uh, and so you're like, well, crap, if the universe exists, well, you could, you could do this sort of argument. You could say like, if the universe exists, therefore God does not exist because there'd be no reason for God to create this, you know, at this moment or rather than that moment, the universe is here. So Ooh, I can see why this bothers you. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So how, what's your take? On well, that? since I don't have to say there's such a thing as sooner, then it's no problem. Whereas for Clark, Clark, uh, he thinks there is a sooner cause he thinks like time just is necessarily going from moment to moment to moment to moment to moment. He doesn't think you'd have like a, like a pause where there's just one moment and then, you know, nothing else is happening. Are you not taking the easy way? Uh, I think it's a, I think like logic pushes me this way. The reasons push me this way. I just don't see why time has to necessarily flow forward always. Like I think time could just pause for a bit. No problem. So if God makes the timeline. Yeah. Seems a very complicated business here. Oh, definitely. First, you don't have time to create a timeline because it's happening right now. Mm-hmm. Well, you could you could have as many moments as you want to think about it, I guess. Or you might just say what, what most what most theists want to say is that if God's all knowing, it doesn't take a particular amount of time to to figure out what you want to do. You just know it like instantly. That doesn't bother me too much. I'm happy to say maybe you know it takes a while for God to contemplate and, and, and weigh decisions. Like I don't really care. I'm happy to say either view doesn't really affect it too much. Um, but it definitely has to be the case, though, that there's a like an like a, some sort of openness to the future before God decides this is the timeline that I want. Mm. And most theists actually, what they do is they'll say they'll say God's timeless, and so He does it all like in one moment. But what they'll do is they'll do the sneaky thing where they'll say, um, "Well, God figures out the timeline in a series of logical moments. They're not temporal moments; they're logical moments." And they function exactly the same way as temporal moments. And so that way it gives like God like a particular logical succession of how to think about like yeah. everything and how to decide I want this kind of world and I want this kind of universe and I want this to happen. And they'll give them a whole bunch of these logical moments. But then they'll say, but it's all one timeless moment though. 
and and i want to be like come on you're just you're just cheating um i'm not i'm not buying this yeah i don't either and then and what's what's weird is when you look at some of the like the dead people who said this like some of the like throughout the tradition they'll kind of get to this point where they'll say yeah there's all these logical moments in 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 the life of god he's got he's like you know there's a logical series of moments not a temporal but a logical series of moments which he thought about this and then they kind of get pushed on a couple of like points and they'll be like oh well but this is just a useful way for talking it's not really how it is god just knows it instantly and that's that and so they'll give themselves this like nice way to try to get out of these sort of worries. And then like if they're pushed on it, they'll be like, eh, no, it doesn't, it's not real. It's just a useful way of talking. But you have to explain this a bit more. Like uh, um, you say that so the thing that really bothers me is like if God is time. Yeah. And things get created at every single instant. I just don't understand how can someone take decision if there is no time to take in decision. Oh, I see. Because there should be a distinction between contemplating and then the next moment being deciding. If not, I mean, yeah, how do you do that? So you could say something like this. You could say there's a moment where God exists and God's contemplating. And then the next moment is God making the decision to create a particular timeline. And then maybe the moment after that is the time, like whatever timeline God's established, you know, say like a universe with all sorts of stuff happening in it. Then that's the like the third moment is that universe coming into existence uh-huh. to kick off that series of moments that God selects. I don't like this. Like what's wrong? No. <laughs> what's wrong with I this? I don't like this because that's implied that He decides one timeline and that's all established. Yeah, not everybody's happy with that. So it means like I don't have any free will. Well, maybe. No, um, I don't. It's not maybe. It's clearly right there. I've got worries about it. Um, but yeah, some people think that, well, true, you just don't have free will. And it's fine because, uh, you know, it would be terrible if you did. Others think that you could have some kind of free will that's compatible with God determining a timeline. Uh, like God determines the entire way things are. And, you know, they'll say like, well, that's fine. Like the kind of freedom that's worth having is one where it's compatible with that. I think the, in the book... There was yeah. something about free will. It, well, there's no direct statement that in the Bible that says you have free will, but there's lots of things that strongly imply it because it talks about you having moral responsibility and things like statements like choose this day whom you will serve, you know. So like there's lots of things that strongly imply or just flat out just assume you have some kind of free will. But oh. there's but it doesn't give you like the actual philosophical story of what free will is. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. So, coming back to that point, right? If it's decided, you know, the timeline, yeah, that's a yeah, we don't influence at all the timeline because we don't influence God. That's a deep worry for these sorts of positions. So, that say I can go tomorrow tithing. and start killing everyone, and like, meh, I'm going to heaven anyway if it God decided to, yeah. Well, I guess to be more consistent, it, it would be already determined that you were going to do that, yeah, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> But I'm going to have it anyway. Yeah, it's going to happen. So so what is the point of like, you know, having a life or being moral and blah, 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 and the thing that you like? Right. So this is a common objection that like an open theist will push against uh, this sort of view. And they'll say like, it just can't be the case that God predetermines an entire timeline because then you just wouldn't have free will. And there would be no point in like praying, trying to be a moral person or everything because it's already decided exactly what you're going to do before you even had a chance to uh, decide yourself what you're going to do. And so there's no sense in which you're responsible for your actions because your actions are determined before you're even able to perform them. So what's even the point to create a thing that you already know how to do and behave? Right. It's like watching an old movie over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, um, so this is, so an open theist is going to say that's exactly right. So this just can't be the, the way God set the world up. Uh, God just can't, there can't be like a set determined future of how the world's going to go. Um, but someone who's like a Calvinist, they'll say, well, no, you do have a kind of free will. I get, I can see you don't like that version of free will that I want to affirm, but you know, but there's a particular objection you've just laid out, which is why would God create it if he knows exactly how it's going to go? Well, you could say something like this. Uh, so someone like John Feinberg gets, gets asked this question and he's like, why would God create a universe if he's already determined exactly how it's going to go? And Feinberg's like, well, like you could write a story out, like a, write a movie uh, and you know exactly how the movie's going to turn out, but wouldn't you still want to like create the movie or watch the movie after you like wrote it? Like no, no. I mean, it's like it, no. Mm-hmm. What is the point of that? First is just watching the movie by himself, which is kind of weird. 
You never watch movies? Well, you know, you don't watch movies by yourself. No, I mean, it's like, imagine God watching a movie and like, Haha, I wrote this and now I'm watching it. Good job. What is the point of that? <laughs> None. Well, well, no, I don't know. Like, if you were, so say you're like a script writer, uh, you write a script out, you plan out how you want the movie to go and everything. It's one thing to do all that. And then it's another thing to actually Just watch it Just patting yourself on the back? That's, that's how you're used to God. I mean, okay, on this version, yeah, on this doctrine of God, I guess I like that would be kind of God patting himself on the back. Yeah, but that's like, exactly what a Calvinist wants to say, though. Calvinists want to say, why does God create a universe for his own glory? He does everything for his own glory. So, yeah. It sounds so selfish. Well, it, don't have nothing to do with this person. You know, <laughs> you think he's a very selfish God. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, hey, no. Fair enough, I guess. Because I'm, no, I'm no longer a Calvinist, so I don't. I'm not too bothered by these things because I'm just like, yeah, this, that does seem weird. So, so much the worse for Calvinism. But, but yeah, Calvinists will just go, but no, no, this is what we should expect. Because if you are the greatest possible being, um, you are also the being that's worthy of worship. Because like you're the, you're the thing that is the greatest value in the, universe, in the entire the world. What's the point to worship someone who already know that everything he does is great? Why should I keep telling him, oh, you, whatever you do is great. And I have no say on anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing I'm going to do, I'm going to influence anything i do or anything you do yeah but i would keep worshiping you for for what for what reason yeah um well again the calvinist is going to say i am affirming a particular version of free will that you are obviously denying so i, I think you do have free will in some kind of sense which sense because um, I'm really missing the point here. Uh, no, because I, I, since I don't buy their version of free will, it's hard for me to... I'm trying to be as sympathetic to them as I can, but I because I really do buy your argument a lot. But, but you know, uh, so th but they're going to say there's the sense of free will where, like, your freedom is compatible with being determined by something else. The freedom is compatible to be determined from something else. Yeah, so freedom is compatible with being determined. So it's called compatibilism. Um, not well but if you deny that it is then you then you would be an incompatibilist um, okay so then you have a different theory of free will than they do but how can it be compatible if i already determined what i have to do obviously i don't have no say yeah um so what they'll say is uh you're free in the sense of you always do what you want to do you perform your no action. i do not because it's already been predetermined <laughs> well no like you so say everything's determined and you give the response you just did and they'd be like well that's the response you wanted to give you had a desire to give that response and you you did it so therefore you're free i'm sorry yeah no. then you would be an incompatible someone make this script yeah even if i'm passionate or whatever i'm saying right now right it's been right down by someone else right so that doesn't make me free that's i think what and this is exactly the reason why I struggle to to understand this view anymore because it seems to me that um, this is this guy I, this point where it's supposed to be compatible I, I just want to go that that doesn't look like it's really compatible so you so so you would be affirming a position called incompatibilism you would say it is not the case that freedom is compatible with determinism they are incompatible you can't have both of them you got to have one or the other yeah and the Calvinist is going to say well I, 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 it's it's both it's both it's fine. They're compatible. And then you're going, I can't no. believe you were one of those. Well, I was a teenager. I didn't know anything, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you get out of that, then? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> I started, when I was in university and started studying more theology and more philosophy, I thought I was still a Calvinist when I was reading all these different views. And I just wasn't really clear on anything. So I, I was starting to adopt a view called Molinism, where God still knows the future, but he somehow knows what you'll freely do. And I thought, well, that just, you know, it looks like what I've always thought Calvinism was. Because what I was doing was when I would hear objections like what you're raising, I would be like, well, well you still have free will because Calvinists say that. But I didn't understand what the Calvinist account of free will was. So it was just kind of building in like whatever version of free will I wanted. So it was just like, so basically like a te being a teenage Calvinist meant I don't actually know what I believe. I'm affirming some views because some people that I thought were cool told me to affirm them. Uh, I don't actually understand the views myself. And so as I was thinking through it, I was coming up with something that was completely at odds with the view itself 
which is probably, I think, what most internet Calvinists uh, do today. Like, you know, it's like they watch some video of some guy they like on YouTube and they're like, that sounds really cool, but they don't know what they're talking about. They've not studied it in any depth. Well, that's... But that's what all of us do about everything. I mean... Exactly. I mean, um, you decide to, you know, take a big stand and decide what you want to do with your life is studying this particular thing. Right. And you dedicate so much time to it. Yeah. And so much effort and reading so many books. Yeah. So obviously you have a much more clear view now than now, back that, then. Yeah. And you cannot expect everybody to have doing, dedicate the same time. No, because it. that would be crazy. I, I mean, know. they've got other things to do. And I hope they do other things because there's a lot of stuff I'm not doing that, other people, <laughs> that needs to be done. Somebody's got to do it. Someone has to extract this DNA tomorrow. Right. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I don't want to do it. You can't make me. I'm not extracting any DNA tomorrow. That's yeah, your job. That's my job. Exactly. Okay, so we talked about time. And talked about time. Lots of different things. We talked about providence in some sense. Talked about free will a little we bit. We did. We talked about lots of things. Mm -hmm. Keep yourself busy, don't you? I try. And there you have it. Another episode of the Reluctant Theologian Podcast. Stay tuned for more episodes on God and Time.